uh, like I said, we're really excited about this webinar. We want to present to you the top five tips for paper call marketers. And uh, we feel at Ring Partner uh, somewhat responsible to help educate and train people in uh, paper call and uh, help them assess the opportunity and then take advantage of that opportunity once we've given them the right uh, skills and knowledge to do that. So uh, right now what I'm going to do is actually uh, launch a poll uh, just to kind of get an idea of where everybody is at. Uh, so if you just hang on a sec, I'll launch this and then let me know, uh, you know, are you currently using uh, paper call campaigns? Yes, very successfully. Yeah, yes, but with limited success or not yet, but planning too soon uh, or not yet uh, at all. So if everyone can uh, uh, sort of cast their vote and let us know where you're at, and I'll leave that open for uh, a couple more minutes uh, until we kind of get started. So please uh, cast your vote and let us know where, where everyone's at so we can assess the audience. All right, so I think everyone's uh, voted now. We can take a look at uh, uh, sort of the results. So uh, we've got about 17 people, uh, uh, 17 attendees today who are doing uh, very well with uh, paper call campaigns. A lot of people in that uh, yes, but with limited success category. Uh, and I think that's actually uh, great for the audience today to learn some of the top five tips that some of the, uh, these publishers that are doing um, quite well with paper call campaigns. Uh, you can learn some of those tips and tricks that they're doing. And uh, good to see that there's you know, uh, a good majority of you who are probably here to learn a little bit about paper call uh, and planning uh, to get started. And I'm quite happy to see that uh, only 8% of you have not yet at least uh, tried paper call. So thanks for uh, casting your vote. And we will move on to uh, the presentation now. So. Just a little bit about uh, today's webinar. It's, it is with uh, John Bellavo, who's a, an employee here at Ring Partner. Uh, and I'll just give you a little bit of background about Ring Partner. So we've been around for uh, about two years now. We are a dedicated paper call network. We're 100% committed to paper call, uh, helping uh, publishers and affiliates drive traffic to uh, generate calls for advertisers, and everyone gets paid on a performance basis. So we were founded in Victoria, BC, in Canada. Uh, we're founded by uh, experienced marketers, myself, Mike Williams, uh, Ryan Gerhardt, Todd Dunlop, and an expert team of uh, online marketers and paper call marketers. As I said, we're 100% paper call focused. We're committed to making that work uh, for both publishers and advertisers. And uh, we're committed to doing it in a performance marketing fashion. We uh, only make money when you make money, and I think that helps align uh, all the motivation from uh, publisher to advertiser, and everyone can be successful along the way. So a little bit about our pres presenter today, John. John is a uh, former DJ, used to be uh, at the clubs uh, entertaining everyone. Uh, I wanted to say that he was a reformed DJ, but he wouldn't let me, so uh, he's a former DJ. I think he was quite successful with that. and. Uh, when he his wife was pregnant, he had a kid and had to get a real job. So uh, that's all our benefit that we get John and not the uh, the DJ John. So he's an experienced online marketer with about five years experience in the online marketing space, uh, specifically in the performance and affiliate marketing uh, arena. Uh, he's been with Ring Partner for about two years now, so he's been along for for the ride. And uh, he's our most experienced distribution manager here at Ring Partner, so he's quite knowledgeable in uh, paper call performance marketing. And I'm really happy to have him here to present to you guys the top five tips that he recommends for his publishers uh, for paper call success. And if you want to follow John, uh, you can <coughs> check him out on his Twitter handle, which is at John Bon Moby. So definitely check him out there. And at this time, I'll pass things off to John, and he will take it from there.
All right, thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Uh, and welcome, everybody. It's my first time doing a webinar, so pretty excited to see uh, that people actually showed up. So I'm just going to go over, you know, some some basic tips as well as some tips that'll, uh, you know, apply to some experienced paper call marketers, but just stuff that I either find myself talking about quite a bit uh, or, or things that I, I just really want to, to get out there, you know, valuable information for sure. So first thing we're going to move to is uh, just talking about tracking and making sure that uh, you are tracking properly when uh, gathering, you know, data is necessary. It's a very important part of the, the marketing equation uh, and tracking and paper call has come a, a long way in the last two years. But uh, knowing the most efficient option for your traffic can be tough. And with paper call uh, two years ago, tracking definitely wasn't where it is today. And if you're used to running, you know, link-based campaigns, uh, you know, it's a bit of a different beast. Uh, paper call is tracked using unique toll-free numbers rather than links. So when you pull a number for a campaign, it's unique to you. Any calls are going to be associated to your account. And uh, typically with paper call, if they go over a certain duration, that's when your, your conversion occurs. So, you know, the, the most widely used and, and basic method of, of trying to, you know, track valuable data is just by using a, a different unique number uh, per, you know, things like ad group or keyword, uh, or, you know, if you're testing and split testing uh, creative or landing pages, you know, using different numbers for, for all of your variables. Um, it, it's good, and, and if you don't need to track a bunch of stuff, it's the most efficient way to do it, and, uh, you know, you can pull... Uh, through Invoca, uh, which we use for tracking uh, a lot of our uh, paper call campaigns, um, all of the uh, all of the data will be there. You can pull up to I think ten numbers. You can speak to your distribution manager if you need more. So I mean, if you do need like fifty numbers to accurately track your campaign, then then great. But beyond that, there there's more in depth options. When you're running with uh, something like AdWords uh, or uh, you know maybe some Bing traffic. Um, you can use uh, call forwarding. So you would set up your ad with uh, a toll-free number that we've provided you, and then uh, enable call forwarding in Google to, um, it, it'll track the length of the call for you. So you can set a conversion point, uh, say the campaign converts after a two minute duration, you can set that point in Google, and that'll allow it to tie uh, a call to a conversion point and the search term that generated that call. So it gives you fairly accurate keyword tracking. Uh, some campaigns will have something like an IVR in front um, or, or different things that might you know, make the duration slightly longer. So uh, I'd often uh, recommend if, if, say, it's a two-minute uh, conversion point for the campaign but it has an IVR, maybe setting Google at uh, two minutes and 15 seconds just to give you a, a bit of a buffer there. Um, but yeah, it, it gives you accurate keyword tracking uh, without having to set up you know, all of your, your high volume keywords and different ad groups. Um, it just, it's easier set up. You have all of your uh, data there in, in your AdWords account, in your dimensions tab um, you know, to look at and to export and, and, and use as needed for optimization. If you're going to run display traffic, traffic uh, tracking is, is more important um, there, or at least like accurate tracking is more important when you're, when you're having to pull in uh, more more data than just a, you know a keyword that triggered it, especially on mobile. If you're uh, you know gathering data like devices and operating systems, it becomes uh, much more needed. Invoca offers a great technology called ring pool tracking, and uh, this allows you to pull in a unique sub ID, and you can uh, actually post it back to a third party you know tracking software through a uh, Invoca calls a webhook, which is uh, basically you know a server to server post back pixel if, if you're used to using third-party tracking with, uh, with link-based campaigns. Um, so it, it'll allow you to set it up and display a dynamic number. So it, it'll dynamically insert a number on every unique uh, click to your, your landing page. Um, and and uh, you know, it'll be based on you having a side ID attached to your, your, your tracking link, um, which is a little bit more, more complicated for, for some of the beginners, but you, know, you can reach out to us to get more information on that. But because of this unique uh, number that's been dynamically inserted on each impression, it'll, uh, it'll allow us to grab and pull in the sub ID that you're passing and then post it back to you. So, uh, you know, if you're using a third party tracking software like, uh, you know, Volume or iMobi Tracks and you're using something like a Click ID, you can set up your tracking uh, campaign within your platform to, uh, you know, gather all the data that you need uh, being passed from your traffic source. So uh, as I mentioned, devices, regions, um, you know, all the various things that you would want to know. 
And if you're not using a third-party tracking platform, you can, uh, you can use it to just pass back uh, or post back to your traffic source directly. So, um, you know, an example on, you know, if you're using a desktop uh, tracking or traffic source like a PPV network and you wanted to pass through your target ID, uh, you can use the ring pool tracking to grab the target ID and post it back to your traffic source. So all of your data is in, in, in one, one uh, you know, useful place for you. The next thing that I would, uh, you know, want to chat about, and this is something that I probably talk about quite a bit, and I'm sure some of you have, have uh, talked to me about it before as well. Uh, creatives are extremely important, and uh, not not enough split testing gets done, um, and uh, sometimes just not enough work gets put into, you know, the creative people are using, um, whether it's ad copy or whether it's a banner, uh, your landing pages. Uh, a lot of people in the online marketing world are used to grabbing a link uh, of a network landing page and running with it. If it works, great. If not, you know, usually means the offer is no good and they, they move on. In paper call, it's kind of the wrong approach. Generating a call is not as simple uh, as a big call now button uh, on a generic looking landing page. I mean, sometimes that will work. Uh, something simple and basic can, can occasionally work, but uh, you know, your entire campaign is based on a phone number rather than a link. So you have a lot more opportunities and a lot more options uh, to, to drive a good call to action. When it comes to, to landing pages and, and banners, uh, I always recommend that marketers use their own whenever possible. If you don't have the resources to, uh, to come up with that yourself or, or create it yourself, um, you know, you can go on even places like Fiverr and usually get fairly cheap creative designed and, and you know, especially if you want to be able to split test multiple, multiple versions, um, you know, it might be good to outsource somebody on ODESP or go to Fiverr to get some stuff put together. But uh, to set yourself apart and, and move ahead of the pack and stay innovative, I mean, having creative and, and being able to optimize it rather than just testing one thing if it doesn't work and moving on is extremely important. It's going to set you apart from, from the rest of the people in that vertical and it's going to give you uh, more options. I mean, one minor tweak could, could boost you up another 10, 20 percent and uh, that could be the, the make or break factor for that campaign for you. It uh, allows you to test, you know, as I mentioned, ad copy, you know, different colors and images, different layouts and a small change can make a huge difference as, as I said. Uh, if you're not a developer or designer and you don't want to outsource it, there's some great tools out there as well. Um, you know, Unbounce.com does landing pages, uh, very easy to use interface. They have uh, some good tutorials as well um, to help uh, create and launch your landing page. Uh, there's also things like Wix.com, which is, is quite similar. And uh, for, for basic graphic design for banners and stuff, you can use uh, a free online platform. Uh, it's, it's a Pixlr, P-I-X-L-R.com. Uh, it's one that I've used, you know, if you're on the road or, or you know, you just want to pay for uh, Adobe Photoshop, um, it's something that works great for basic banner design. Uh, and then another really in, important thing is the call to action. Getting somebody to click a link is fairly easy, but generating a call can be a little bit more difficult. Um, luckily, it's, it's more than balanced out by typically higher conversion rates and paper call uh, and that's just kind of based on the fact that once somebody's committed to making a call they want to speak with somebody if they're gonna you know talk to somebody and ask questions and and they're engaged enough to want to learn about the product or the service uh, they're very likely to, to go over the the short durations in paper call which are usually kind of the one two minute mark um, so yeah, once they're committed to making that call uh, it, the conversion rates are typically quite high um, yeah, call to action, uh, something simple as I mentioned before, like you know, click here or call now, it just might not be enough. So, so try different strategies and, and different placements. Uh, sometimes the big obvious click to call button will work, but sometimes you, you may just want to hyperlink the number, uh, you know, especially if you're, if you're on uh, mobile traffic or you, know, you might want to add the, the number kind of organically or in a less obvious way within the content on your landing page, especially if you're going for a more content heavy approach. Um, people are willing to pick up the phone and make a call and luckily we've been able to prove that uh, you know, time and time again over the last couple years. Another, another really important factor is uh, you know, just add, add urgency. That's the most important thing. Uh, work on the call to action and use words like hotline or special offer. Uh, you know, find, find that extra reason that's going to make them call now rather than get their interest and they might think, okay, well maybe I'll give them a call later. You know, once, once you have them on your page, once you have them looking at your ads, uh, you need them to want to have to call right now. So, so make sure you're adding some urgency there. 
For paper call uh, traffic sources, um, you know, it, it's something that people want to know a lot about. And uh, when we first got started in uh, in doing this, I mean, the majority of what we saw was going to be on, on on search traffic, and it's still a huge part of of what we we do see and work with. Uh, but we've been learning, especially over the last year, um, how many different types of traffic that we're able to find great success with, uh, with paper call marketing and it's just opened up a, a whole new world for us and for a lot of our marketers which is, which is fantastic. Uh, I'd kind of look at you know, the top three um, specifically being search, so it doesn't matter if it's paid or organic. Um, search traffic helped make paper call what it is today and uh, works great on, on both desktop and mobile traffic which is, which is really good. Most of the traffic is uh, you know, coming from Google or Bing, but some people are, are also finding success with some of the smaller third tier sources like 7Search and some of the other ones out there. Um, with click-to-call uh, click extensions in, in Google and Bing, it obviously lends itself to be a great fit for pay-per-call, but more and more success is coming from actually getting people onto a landing page, even on desktop, with, with great engaging content, especially with, with something like a financial offer. Uh, or, or education or things that people are probably going to want to ask some questions about, getting them on the phone is, uh, is a great way to lead to a very valuable conversion for, for the publisher and for the advertiser. I mean, that's what makes paper call so great. Probably the second biggest uh, type of traffic that we have been working with um, is PPV. And, uh, you know, it's a great method for, for broad offers, but also, you know, very, very niche and targeted campaigns. Um, so using traffic sources like Traffic Vance and Lead Impact and, and 50 on Red, uh, you know, those are kind of the top three that I would recommend. And uh, how it works for, for the people listening that aren't too familiar with PPV traffic is uh, the users have a browser extension uh, installed on their computer, um, you know, that they, they've opted in to install at a previous point. And, what it does is it, it uh, will allow them to pop up ads uh, or contextually link words while they're browsing the internet. Um, so it's it's when you're when you're buying this traffic, you can buy it based on keywords um, or more specifically. And, and what most people will do is actually bid on um, URLs that people might visit. So if somebody has this extension installed and they go to uh, Google.com. Um, that's going to trigger your your ad to pop up in a new browser window. Or sorry, it's usually pop under, so it'll pop under the uh, the page they were going to. It's a great fit because of how targeted it can be, and the the amount of, of cheap volume there is for uh, for for you know these types of campaigns. Um, you know the the costs are significantly less expensive than you know running a campaign on search. Uh, there, there's been a lot of success in, in some of the really high volume verticals, uh, things like tech support uh, is kind of what helped spark it maybe a year ago, a little bit longer, but people are finding a lot more opportunity in uh, well, well beyond tech support and in some of the more niche verticals. Uh, you know, when you're promoting, say, a plumbing campaign, um, you can build a fairly generic landing page with a clear call to action, you know, might be a 24-hour emergency plumbing hotline, and you're going to target, um, you know, all of the companies out there that provide plumbing services and uh, with cheap enough traffic and, uh, you know, decent volume of, of URLs that you're going to target, you can really generate some, some great quality calls uh, using this method. It's also a little bit easier to set up, so, um, you know, you can probably get five or six good and targeted campaigns at a fraction of the price of, uh, of running a search campaign. And as long as you work on your creative and get it going, um, th there's just a, a world of potential. A lot of people will gloss over it and think you need to have a very broad offer. But what I, what I find is it, it's the opposite. Broad offers usually lend to very competitive verticals, whereas if you're, if you're going very niche with it, you may not have a ton of volume, but your conversion rates are going to be extremely high just because of how targeted the traffic is going to be. It's an easier campaign to set up with less competition, which lends you to be able to set up more campaigns. And if you can set up you know, five to ten easier to manage campaigns and make the same amount of money as one, uh, extremely difficult and uh, extremely um, competitive vertical, it, it, it all ends up being the same amount of money, and uh, you know, I'd much rather go the niche route personally. 
Uh, mobile display is probably the third biggest type of traffic we see. Uh, it does lend itself to be you know, more for broad appeal offers like gift cards and giveaways, uh, auto insurance, student, uh, student debt consolidation, things along those lines. You want a campaign that, that appeals to, to large demographics uh, and create uh, you know, plenty of creative to test. As I mentioned before, it, it, it's always just a matter of uh, one banner being better than the other. And if you only tested the first one, then, then it could just lend you to wasting time when, when a couple of small changes could have uh, really, really made it go for you. Uh, when done right, there, there's a ton of volume uh, to take advantage of. And some of the top networks, if you haven't done mobile display before, that I'd recommend looking at would uh, be GoToMobi. Uh, they're, they're, they're a great company and they have a lot of good inventory. Uh, SiteScout and, and JumpTap are, are some of the, the other good ones. The, the fourth thing I kind of wanted to chat about was, uh, or is something that I, I've talked to quite a few people about in the past, and uh, it's probably or could be the most important tip on uh, on the list, and it's just uh, you know don't let other people work harder than you. It's one of the the, the issues that I've come across, um, and uh, something that I know a lot of people out there struggle with. But you get excited about looking to launch a, a campaign, uh, you know, you push it live, and maybe it just doesn't go quite as well as you'd hoped right out of the gate, and uh, you make some minor optimizations, but you don't you don't put in any extra work to, to make it go. The main thing is, yeah, it's, it's just as simple as don't be lazy. I mean, the, the dreams of making easy millions on the internet fill a lot of people's heads. A lot of people get into this business, but uh, if you're not the luckiest person in the world, it's just, it's not going to happen. Uh, even with hard work, there, there are no guarantees, but uh, I don't know many successful marketers in, in this industry that didn't get to where they are without a fight. If someone is making, uh, you know, making a, a lot of money out there, or, or just finding a lot of success, um, copying other people's work, or taking the easy, uh, easy road with, you know, things like worn out or, or maybe ripped creative that they found online. Longevity and you know, to build a business around this, you have to be willing to always go the extra mile to hey, give John? yourself a 2% or a 10% edge by... <laughs> hey, John? Yep. Sorry, one sec. You just kind of cut out there. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if it was just me, but if you want to just uh, backtrack a little bit and, and kind of repeat what you said so everybody can hear it. Sure, no problem. Can you hear me now? Thanks. Yeah, I can hear you okay now. Thanks. Great. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, basically, uh, I was just saying, if you want to build a long-term business rather than you know short-term money, it, it's a matter of making sure you work harder than everybody else and give yourself as a 2% you know, or 5 or 10% edge on, on what you're able to accomplish because that could be the difference in, uh, in, in staying on top. Um, you know, before you launch a campaign, you need to be prepared, you need to do your research, uh, not just on your competition, but on the industry you're about to start promoting in. You should always you know, be one step ahead with, with uh, what you know and uh, if you're not, you'll just end up two steps behind and constantly battling from the ground up. Uh, you know, make the extra effort when you can. 90% uh, of marketers aren't going to do that. They're going to take shortcuts. So if you can be within that 10%, you are, you're going to find more success and easier success down the road uh, that, than, than most other people. Um, yeah, it's simple things. Instead of testing one landing page, test three. Uh, you know, instead of building a site for a campaign, you know, build a site for your audience and then find other ways to monetize the, the site that you have. Uh, if you think with that approach, you know, if you think how am I going to make money with a campaign versus uh, how am I going to engage an audience and then find a way to monetize it, I mean, it's just two schools of thought and, and one of them is going to, going to help you make long-term money. And then, uh, you know, the final tip that I have, and again, another one that I'm sure a couple of you, uh, you know, I've, I've tried to badger it into you the best I can, is uh, stop ignoring niche markets. It's, uh, it's extremely important. I've seen some great campaigns that, uh, that have been ignored for one, two, or even three months, and, and once finally somebody, uh, you know, jumps on it, they end up finding a gold mine and you know gold mines never last but uh, it happens time and time again uh, it's, it's one of those ones where people come into a network they they want to know what has the most volume 
what campaign are, are people or you know what campaign is making people the most money or, or you know paying out the most revenue and that's great and there can be huge success when you go with that approach um, but with a niche market you're, you're gonna have an easier time targeting people so the conversion rates are going to be higher it's not going to require as much broad traffic it's going to require very targeted uh, keywords and campaigns uh, that are also going to have less competition uh, you know there will be competition in every niche market but the level of competition you're fighting against is is significantly decreased uh, another great thing is with a lot of niche campaigns, you are you know you're going to see higher payouts and higher uh, overall ROI than your your usual competitive verticals. One that I uh, I remember you know previously was a campaign that was in the structured settlement space, and that's when a uh, somebody maybe had a car accident lawsuit that pays out monthly or a uh, lottery winning that pays out monthly, and they could sell it all. Uh, it's a structured settlement. And they could sell it all for, for a lump sum or a portion of it for a lump sum. And it got ignored for, for quite a while. Uh, and we saw the, the potential, so we kept pushing. Finally, a couple people jumped on, and it became one of the biggest search verticals that, that we had worked with um, for you know, a good six-month span. It was great for us, and uh, it's a vertical that we're, we're still working in, and, and there is a ton of potential there. And it's little, little things like that. I mean, legal is one of our biggest search verticals and has been for a long time, but that one also took quite a while to get off the ground because you know, people were wrapping their heads around things like auto insurance that everybody wants to promote and not realizing that there are a lot of people out there who want uh, or need to contact a lawyer for, for various reasons. So uh, stop and take a look at every campaign. If it's going to you know, be a, a low volume campaign, it, that's fine. It's probably going to take you 10% uh, of the time to, to get set up and, and turn into a profitable campaign. And then you can move on to something else. And maybe you set up four campaigns instead of one uh, with, with easier you know, it's easier to manage, uh, less expensive to test. Uh, you know, just various great, great reasons to uh, to look at your niche your niche markets when you're starting to do this. Uh, and then, you know, bonus tip: always uh, always talk to your distribution manager or or any of your contacts at Ring Partner. Uh, you know, give us a call, get us on Skype or email. Um, you know, stay on the blog. Uh, we're constantly putting out great content there. Uh, YouTube videos. Um, you know, some of our, our previous webinars are available on YouTube as well. Just uh, you know, other informative videos, social media. I mean, we we want to engage with uh, with all of our clients and our partners, and it's it's extremely important to us. Um, we we've always kind of had the the mentality that we would rather work with a tighter, small group of uh, of, of great partners than have this uh, massive network of people that we never talk to. It, it just uh, you know you're going to find more success when you can have that one-to-one -one time with as many people as possible. And uh, you know we have a lot of good information, as Mike mentioned. There are a lot of uh, long-term experienced marketers uh, who've been in this industry for 10 plus years. Uh, a lot of people here, so we do have information that's going to be beneficial, and, and we definitely want to share it. So don't hesitate to reach out and uh, you know stay in touch with us. I mean, weekly, monthly, whatever it takes. But we're we're always here to help. All right, uh, I think we're going to move on to uh, some questions and answers, which uh, I think Mike might uh, you know, gather those up for me. So if you have any questions about you know, what I talked about, you want me to um, you know, elaborate on anything, uh, or, or yeah, just you know, any kind of basic question or, or, or question you have about paper call and getting started or anything along those lines, um, you know, send them over through the chat and uh, I'll let Mike gather them up. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, John. Thanks a lot for that. I think there was a lot of uh, really great information in there. And uh, I do have some questions uh, coming in. And if people want to enter their questions into the question box there, uh, we'll do our best to answer those. Uh, and if we can't answer them, then we will figure out a way to post them on our blog or with the YouTube uh, video that should be up uh, hopefully by tomorrow. Uh, but uh, I've got a couple questions here. Uh, the first one's regarding tracking. Uh, someone was asking about using sub IDs. Are, are publishers able to use sub IDs with their tracking? Yeah, definitely. Um, so if you're going to be going with uh, just using the basic, uh, you know, using a, a toll-free number to track something, um, you can name each number. So essentially, you can use that as an option to put in a sub ID. Um, if you are looking to pass through a sub ID from a, a traffic source, whether it be Google. 
uh, or whether it be a PPV or, or a mobile network, um, then you're going to want to use something like ring pools. And uh, that'll allow you to pass it through from your ad to us and have it within your reporting. And for more information on setting up tracking, it can be a bit complicated, definitely reach out to uh, your distribution manager. Uh, it's one of those things where uh, once you get it once you get it set up, once you get it going, uh, it's a lot easier, but it does take a little bit more uh, setup work. Great. Uh, John, do you mind also just talking a little bit about uh, Google tracking and how that works? Uh, just sort of give an overview of, of how publishers can take advantage of that. Yeah, so with, uh, with Google tracking, as I mentioned, um, using the, the call forwarding in AdWords on your click-to-call extensions will allow Google to track the length of a call. And uh, because of that, if you set a, a duration point for a conversion within AdWords, it'll see the call lasted this long, it was triggered by this search uh, term, and it'll you know, s say it's a conversion for you. So you'll have that uh, reporting available within Google, which is great. Uh, there's also options if you're sending your traffic to a landing page, um, you can use ring pool tracking to, uh, to display a dynamic number for every click that goes to your landing page. And because a new number being shown on every click uh, allows us to grab the information that you've passed through and, and uh, pull it into the reporting so you can see, okay, this call in my Invoca reporting was triggered by this search term. Uh, we can also you know, post it back to a third-party tracking software if that's what you want to do. Perfect. Uh, so we've got quite a few people asking about uh, the PPV platforms that you mentioned. Do you mind just repeating those or, or adding some suggested PPV traffic sources? Yeah, so Traffic Vance, 50 on red, and Lead Impact, so trafficvance.com, uh, leadimpact.com, and 50, which is the number, 50 on red. Dot com. Um, they're probably the three biggest in the space. There are other other traffic sources out there, but uh, you know all of the feedback that I've had um, from you know partners I've worked with that have, have worked with them and friends that I know that, that have run traffic there. Um, so it just sounds like they're they're very good to work with. They have very uh, very intuitive and easy to use platforms, which uh, which make it you know good, especially if you you haven't run the traffic before. Um, and they should have some good getting started guides, but uh, feel free to you know, chat with your distribution manager, give me a call uh, or, or shoot email um, just to go over it in a little bit more uh, detail. But you know, it, it's, it's different targeting options than, uh, than you're typically going to see with things like, like uh, Google or, or search campaigns where you know, you're, you're popping up uh, a small landing page or, or popping under a landing page um, ad. Uh, based on something that they've searched for or something that they, you know, website that they've gone to. So you get, you have some really fun and creative options to uh, who you're going to target. Perfect. Uh, and then we've got uh, a couple of people also asking about the, the top verticals and then which verticals to start with when you're getting started with paper call. Yeah, so top verticals, it does depend on traffic source, um, but you know, for, for, for the just uh, network wide, let's say. Um, legal has been probably one of the biggest verticals we've worked with for six to eight months, maybe even longer. Uh, there, there's just so much volume out there, more on search than anything else, but uh, for, for people who are looking for personal injury lawyer because they've been in a car accident or they're looking for a criminal defense attorney because they, you know, they've been charged with a crime or an attorney to help them with a DUI case. Uh, and that's the type of thing that somebody's going to their phone or they're going to Google to find. They don't happen to have an attorney on hand. Uh, it's just, you know, you don't, you don't usually have one unless you need one uh, or unless you, you uh, own a company and you always have to have them around. But um, yes, uh, search is great. Uh, Carpet and flooring and home services in general have, have always been really good. Uh, we have a locksmith campaign that is great. And, and you think about it, um, somebody who is locked out of their car, locked out of their house, what are they doing? They're going to their phone, they're searching for locksmith in whatever region they are. And uh, just because of that, there, there's great search volume and conversions there. Uh, with, with other home services like uh, carpet and flooring, plumbing, uh, they're, they're just very natural. Um, search-oriented campaigns, but uh, as I mentioned before, too, I'm going to go for things like uh, PPV traffic. There are pretty, you know, interesting, creative ways to target those people as well. Great. Um, I you guess one other, one other, 
Go ahead. I was just going to say, there's another one I wanted to mention too. Is uh, is finance uh, in in, uh, in general is great. And payday loans, things like that. Yeah, they can get pretty competitive. But uh, I mentioned earlier, structured settlements, things things like that. Uh, the more niche options in uh, in, in finance. Uh, or, or debt relief and uh, you know tax debt relief things like that. I mean we've uh, we've seen a lot of good volume uh, over the last two years in those verticals and um, you know finance in, in general is just people are, are often confused or have questions and uh, it's always great to get uh, get on the phone when you're in that situation. So it lends itself really well to paper call. Great. Um, and then what what sort of traffic source would you recommend as a good starting point? You talked a lot about PPV and you've talked a lot about mobile search. Is there one that you prefer publishers to start with? I think it depends on your past experience. If you're brand new to online marketing or mobile marketing, uh, search is a little bit more straightforward and takes a little bit less uh, less you know creative work as far as getting um, you know landing pages and banners and things like that to test. Uh, also, organic search is really good. You know, you can study and research uh, search engine optimization marketing, um, which uh, lends itself well to moving into paid search on Google AdWords and, and on Bing. So a little bit more straightforward, uh, a little bit more information about getting started available online as well. So good place to start. If you if you have experience with uh, with maybe display marketing, doing media buys, uh, or you know, or mobile display, um, and, and you have the ability to either design and create, or or have somebody design and create, um, you know, good good uh, good ads for you. Uh, then then PPV is a great place to start as well. It's just a matter of what you think you're going to be more comfortable with, and and learning a bit about different types of traffic sources, and finding something that kind of makes sense to you is, is the most important thing when it comes to getting started. Perfect. Yeah, I think that's great advice. I mean, if you know something, or if you have a, a an advantage in a category, you know a little something about. Um, a certain traffic source, you definitely should start. Stick with what you know, and and then just try to you know promote a, a pay per call campaign in that way. Uh, we got uh, a question here about Facebook. Are you seeing anyone have success with Facebook traffic? Yeah, so that's a, that's a great one that uh, I didn't touch on. So I'm glad somebody brought that up. Um, yeah, Facebook. You you can go the organic route, and that works quite well. Uh, you know, building fan pages, um, you know, things along those lines. In in you want to build that around an entire uh, an entire vertical rather than uh, just a campaign. You know, you want to find if it's going to be like home service tips, it lends you to a, a low a world of options as far as the types of campaigns that you can promote. But with with paid traffic on Facebook, we're we're seeing more and more success. And I think the reason it's kind of taking so long for people to figure it out is because it's natural to assume that you know you need very obvious click to call to, to make this work, uh, especially on mobile, but it's just not the case. People are, are willing, if they're engaged uh, you know, by information, they, they are more than willing to pick up a phone and make a call. Um, and, and as I said before, once they're on the phone, they're, they're law, they have a much higher likelihood of converting when they're talking to an expert or talking to a sales agent rather than just like continuing to read a landing page to possibly let a lead form or something like that. Uh, they want an immediate fix or they want an immediate solution or they want their question answered right now. So um, yeah, Facebook uh, paid traffic does work great. I mean, it's, a, it's about engaging them with some content uh, and then presenting them with an immediate answer by making a phone call. Yeah, definitely, and uh, and uh, the sooner that Facebook integrates that uh, click-to-call integration, uh, which I assume there is around the corner, uh, the more viable uh, Facebook will become as an option for pay-per-call traffic. Uh, I got yeah, a question. And not sorry, sorry, I, I, oh, sorry. I was going to say uh, I don't know, you know, if it's necessarily uh, allowed uh, or or if it, if it does work, but uh, you know, I would assume adding a phone number to your your ad before the click even occurs uh, could also be a great option. So, if you are going to run Facebook traffic, it might be good to maybe read up on some blogs or, or uh, you know, e even speak with somebody at Facebook about uh, if you are allowed to add a phone number directly to the ad before somebody makes a click. Great. Um, okay, so next question we've got here is about tweaking creatives. Uh, someone's asked. Uh, you spoke a lot about tweaking creatives and copy and testing a lot, uh, but many advertisers only want you to run theirs. How does that jibe? 
With pay per call, it's uh, actually not usually the case, and and that's what we're used to as marketers. If we come from an online uh, or or you know normal mobile link based stuff uh, or install stuff, um, with with pay per call, yeah, we we need to make sure the creative is going to align with the end goal of the advertiser. But uh, because we're 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 not doing link tracking, we're using a phone number. You you do have more options to uh, test different different options and different things when it comes to your creative and you do get to create more of your own stuff rather than having to run a network landing page or a network banner. Great. Okay. Um, we got a question, another question about tracking. Uh, if you're promoting on AdWords, how would you set up ring pools? So this is actually, uh, I was having a chat with somebody about this today. Um, I have to dive in a little bit more into how the the keyword pass through uh, or you know the keyword ID pass through occurs on Google, but there are a couple different options. Invoca actually has um, settings that will allow you to input your URL and then it'll generate a link specific to the way Google tracks uh, for you to use as your destination URL, and it'll uh, as long as the settings are set up correctly in AdWords, it'll grab whatever you're passing through and bringing it bring it into Invoca through your uh, your URL. So, um, you know, getting ring pools enabled in your account is kind of first step. There's the option of, um, you know, setting it up specifically to AdWords or Bing, uh, which is great that Invoca have done that. Uh, or you can use a PHP script to access it directly and try to pass through the keyword. So uh, it's one that, as I mentioned, I was speaking to somebody uh, earlier about and uh, might try to do a short video or, or short tutorial soon on getting uh, the, the AdWords tracking for ring pools up. Yeah, definitely. I think the, the key there is to realize that uh, you won't be able to use click-to-call integration with uh, the ad extensions in Google. You'll need to actually send the traffic to the landing page. And then what happens is each phone number is assigned to the uh, the click or impression. Um, so there are some limitations with that, but it definitely can be a very useful tool, tool to get that uh, deeper tracking uh, information and insights to your campaign so you can better optimize. So. Um, yeah. It's not uh, typical um, for using the adverse ad, uh, call extension, so you need to send the traffic to the landing page. Exactly. If you're going to be sending uh, you know, people to the call extension, use Google call forwarding. That's going to give you keyword tracking within AdWords. And if you are sending people to a landing page, um, that's when you're going to want to implement some, some ring pool tracking. Cool. Um, so I just got one more question here, and then I think we're going to uh, close things off. Uh, I have one for you myself, but if anybody wants to quickly try and sneak a question in, uh, do it now. Uh, so this question is about uh, campaigns. How much notice do you get before campaigns are, pa are paused or stopped? So unfortunately, it can be short notice on occasion. We, we try our hardest. To uh, to give you know at least two two days notice or or, or a full 24 hours notice, if there's been uh, you know something like a, a violation of terms um, or, or something that you know it, it can lend to a campaign coming down quicker than we would like, uh, and, and you kind of you know keep keep your eye on your inbox, make sure you're using an, a, an email address that you actually uh, you know check regularly when when you're you know setting up our your Ring Partner account just because you will get a notice um, if a campaign is going down. But it, it can vary and we try our hardest to make sure we have uh, ample notice. We have campaigns that have never gone down in, in the two years that uh, I've been here. And then you know you do have a campaign where occasionally um, you know you do find out that it, it is expiring uh, tomorrow. And you know we, we try to contact everybody as quickly as possible. But uh, yeah, we, we just do our best to, to keep campaigns up or, or keep provide ample notice before they do come down. Great. Um, so last question is actually, uh, oh, I've got one that just uh, snuck in here. Let's answer that one and then I'll, answer, ask, I'll ask my question. Uh, how many keywords is considered sufficient for an AdWords campaign? I read about people using over a thousand, a hundred thousand plus keywords. Just wondering how oh, much yeah. it matters. I've, uh, I've uh, heard of some people using upwards of 300,000 or more. Um, it really depends on uh, on your vertical, and there's different ways to set up your, your keywords as well. You could be, um, you know, going the broad, uh, the modified broad match route where you're using, um, you know, broad keywords and then figuring out what search terms are being generated uh, that involve that keyword. 
and then having to you know update your negative list and and kind of go that route, uh, or you could be using exact match keywords where it's a very specific uh, search term that you're you're you know going after to trigger your ad, and, and there's reasons to to use all different types of match types, and you kind of have to learn and play around with them, but. Um, for a very, very broad campaign uh, or a very large volume campaign, you might end up having or starting with you know, 50,000 or 100,000 keywords. This could be an auto insurance or, or something like that. Um, and then you could have a campaign for um, you know, people who need uh, knee and back braces, uh, you know, so for uh, you know, the older demographic. And obviously, just the keywords available for a campaign like that are going to be smaller. Uh, I would recommend when you're doing your keyword research, Stay targeted. I mean, you know, you should be able to look at uh, the ad groups and the keywords that you're finding and, and realize as if they're relevant uh, to some degree. And again, if you can generate 50,000 um, fairly relevant uh, targeted keywords for a campaign, then uh, as long as you have the budget, test them. If you don't have the budget, that's where you're going to want to start uh, trying to, you know, pick out and maybe go with 100 keywords at a time or something like that. Yeah, that's that's great advice, John. You kind of cut out there a little bit, but you were talking about um, relevance, and uh, definitely anything you're doing with Google, it's all about relevance. And the other thing to keep in mind, um, sorry, I was just going to say the other thing to uh, keep in mind is that uh, you want to send good quality calls. If you have a hundred thousand or three hundred thousand keywords. Uh, you don't know where you're getting your calls from necessarily uh, versus if you only have 100 keywords uh, and, you know, 25 of those keywords are driving the traffic, you kind of know which ones drive good quality versus the others. So it's a little easier, little bit easier to manage uh, the quality uh, that you're sending through. So that's something that's important to... Uh, that's starting to cut out, so... Oh, yeah, so I, I got a message here that's saying... <laughs> That it uh, that it cut out there. So uh, I'll just get John to kind of repeat his answer a little bit on the AdWords, and then I'll add to that, and then we will wrap things up. So, so um, yeah, with with uh, AdWords, um, you mean in regards to the keywords? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So basically, uh, you want to keep your keywords relevant. But if you can find a hundred thousand relevant keywords, and you can ha you have the budget to test it, then great. Uh, some verticals are only going to you know have two hundred relevant keywords available. So it's it's just very dependent on your testing budgets and also um, you know the vertical or the campaign that you're going to promote. Yeah, and and then my two cents on that is just managing quality, making sure that uh, you're sending good quality calls, and I think it's easier to manage the quality of your calls and the calls that you deliver if you have uh, less keywords that you know are good converters and good quality uh, calls. So, uh, but with that, uh, sorry, go ahead, John. I was going to say to, to quickly touch on quality as well, uh, and I didn't mention it, but a, a good tip is. Uh, Invoca allows you to use something called call promotions, which allows you to kind of create your own IVRs um, and key press options. So if you are going broad on a campaign, maybe adding an extra IVR um, could make the world of difference in, in filtering out the, uh, the, the, the stuff that might not be great quality as you start to you know, look at your data and gather that data. Um, adding a buffer there can really help so you don't send through poor quality. Great. Yeah, I think that's really good advice. And then, you know, quality uh, lends itself to longer term campaigns for publishers. Uh, so, John, my, my last question for you is just about where uh, publishers can learn more about paper call. Uh, and maybe it's even paper call, PPV, affiliate marketing, PPC, uh, if you have any sort of go to bloggers, forums, tools that they can use. Yeah, so. Um there's a couple paper call markers that run blogs uh, that are very helpful. Um, Premium23.com, uh, Leonidas there, he uh, he's you know put out a bunch of great information on running search campaigns with uh, with paper call, as well as uh, the startuptakeoff.com, which is uh, from a guy named Clayton, uh, another great paper call marketer who's you know put out some good information. Uh, other than that, uh, you know forums are always a great place, and and some really active ones for for pay per call lately uh, have been uh, Stack That Money. It's a paid forum, but I highly recommend it. Definitely worth the money if, if you're looking to, to get information and kind of brush up on, uh, on all things online marketing. There's just a bunch of very experienced people there who are, are willing to help. And then uh, Aft Playbook uh, as well. There, there, there's another great forum that has been uh, you know, talking a lot more about pay per call lately. 
uh, and uh, outside of that, just online marketing in general, PPV is quite prominent there. And uh, yeah, there's a bunch of helpful people there who are more than willing to answer some questions. Uh, and then of course, you know, the Ring Partner blog, YouTube channel. I mean, we try to keep as much uh, you know content coming out as possible. And uh, you know. We want to help people learn this and see the success that we're seeing. I mean, the revenue potential, the, the, the campaign potential, the different traffic options. I mean, it's it's pretty unreal the growth that we've seen in two years with with pay per call marketing. And uh, you know, we try to just keep people as up to date as possible. Awesome. Yeah, I think there's a lot of uh, uh, great uh, places that uh, publishers can uh, learn a lot more, not just about pay per call, but uh, online marketing. So thanks for that, John. And uh, thanks a lot for. Uh, doing this. I think there was um, some really great tips in there, some great questions coming from the audience. So thanks for everyone for joining us today. Uh, we're going to do our best to get this up on the YouTube channel uh, as soon as possible. Uh, watch for an email letting you know where you can watch it. Um, but before we go, John, uh, I'm sure publishers and, and everyone that's attended may have more questions. Uh, if so, how can they contact you? Yeah, so um, you can shoot me an email, which is john, which is j-o-n, at ringpartner.com. Uh, you can call me here at the office. Uh, it's 1-888-656-3726, uh, and my extension is 215. Uh, you know, or you can just uh, you know, play roulette and see which uh, distribution manager you get, because we've got a bunch of very experienced uh, guys on the team here. Uh, and then Skype as well. It's just ring partner john, all one word. Uh, you know, more than happy to chat and elaborate with uh, you know, on anything that we talked about, or if anybody just wants to go over some ideas and, and uh, you know, chat about paper call, uh, always available. Awesome. I think that's, uh, that's great. And uh, we, we do do these webinars at least once a month, so we are trying to uh, keep that going and look forward to uh, doing another webinar next month. Uh, we've yet to determine what that will be on, but uh, stay tuned and we'll let you know. And also, you know, like John said, check out the blog, check out our YouTube channel uh, for past uh, webinars as well and of course follow us on Twitter and Facebook and uh, all the information is on the screen if you want to reach out to us uh, thanks again and uh, we will uh, see you soon thanks all right thanks everyone